As a truck driver, one of your biggest responsibilities is to make sure your vehicle is safe before it leaves the yard. The consequences of not doing a proper inspection may be fines, being put out of service, or worse. Other people's lives depend on your vehicle being safe out on the road. A thorough inspection, which begins before operating any vehicle, continues en route, and finishes with completion of the required written post-trip report, will increase highway safety. Just because the vehicle was in safe condition in the morning does not mean that it will be in the afternoon. Even overnight, while the vehicle is parked, tires can go flat, hoses can leak, and lamps may become defective. The vehicle inspection should be ongoing. Using your senses, listen for irregular sounds, smell for unusual odors, feel changes in the vehicle's response to the road, and observe all gauges, parts of the vehicle, and cargo security. To assist you in performing a safe, effective, and systematic vehicle inspection, the Michigan Center for Truck Safety has created this instructional video. The inspection begins with the driver approaching the vehicle, looking for leaking fluids, and checking whether the vehicle is leaning, indicating possible defects such as weak or broken suspension or a flat tire. The driver also must make sure the brakes are set and be aware of his surroundings. Continue your inspection under the hood on the right side. Begin by locating the dipstick. Check that the oil level is within safe operating range. Next, find the radiator sight glass or coolant recovery reservoir to look for the proper fluid level. Then check that none of the hoses are leaking, loose or worn, and that they are not rubbing or chafing. Make sure that they are secured and look for dripping fluids in the engine compartment on the underside of the engine and transmission. Inspect any visible engine belts for snugness, making sure there is no more than three-quarters of an inch of play at the center of the belt. Also, look for cracks or frays on the alternator belt, and if equipped, the water pump belt and the serpentine belt. You will need to see that the water pump and alternator are secured to the engine and are not damaged, leaking, or missing parts. Then inspect the steering linkage to see that joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. If the vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, such as coil springs, check that they are not shifted, bent, or damaged and are mounted securely. See that the shock absorbers are secure and not damaged or leaking. Beginning with the slack adjuster, look for broken, loose, or missing parts. When pulled by hand with the brakes released, the push rod should not move more than one inch. The brake chamber should be securely mounted and not leaking, cracked, or dented. On the brake hose and lines, look for cracks, wear, or leaks, and for secure couplings. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drum is not damaged and has no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes, or pads is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil, and brake fluid. Check the tire for no less than 4 30 seconds of tread depth. Look to see that the tread is evenly worn and that there are no cuts or separations or any other damage to the tire. The valve stem should be equipped with caps to prevent damage. Also, check for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge, which is preferable, or by striking the tires with a mallet or other similar device. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Check that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not elongated and that there are no cracks or distortions in the rim and mounting. See that the hub and wheel axle seals are not leaking, and if the hub cap has a sight glass or plug, check that the oil level is adequate. Continuing to the other side of the engine compartment, start by checking the windshield washer fluid level. Inspect the steering system beginning with the steering shaft. 
check that the connections are not worn or loose. Next, see that the gearbox is securely mounted and not loose and that the pitman arm is not worn or loose. Then look at the ball and socket joints to make sure there is no movement other than rotational. Check any other steering components for wear or missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. See that the power steering fluid reservoir is mounted securely and not leaking. Check for adequate power steering fluid level, making sure it is in the proper operating range. Also ensure that all hoses are secure and not leaking. Reinspect all visible engine belts on this side of the vehicle. Also, look for cracks or damage to the fan assembly. Continue checking that all engine components are secured to the engine and are not damaged, leaking, or missing parts. Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. See that shock absorbers are secure and not damaged or leaky. Beginning with the slack adjuster, look for broken, loose, or missing parts. When pulled by hand with the brakes released, the push rod should not move more than one inch. Looking at the brake chamber, see that it is not leaking, cracked, or dented and is mounted securely. Inspect the brake hose and lines for cracks, wear, or leaks and for secure couplings. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drum is not damaged and has no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes, or pads is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil, and brake fluid. Check the tire for no less than 4 30 seconds of tread depth. Look to see that the tread is evenly worn and that there are no cuts or separations or any other damage to the tire. The valve stem should be equipped with caps to prevent damage. Also, check for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge, which is preferable, or by striking tires with a mallet or other similar device. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Then, ensure that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not cracked or elongated. Inspect for cracks or distortions in wheel and axle mounting. See that the hub and wheel axle seals are not leaking, and if the hub cap has a sight glass, that the oil level is adequate. Get in the cab, depress the clutch, place the transmission in neutral, start the engine, and then release the clutch slowly. Ensure that the oil pressure reaches the manufacturer's recommended operating level. Then check that all other gauges are working. In addition, make sure that all required paperwork is present. The mirror should be clean and adjusted properly when viewed from the inside. The windshield should be clean and not have any obstructions, damage to the glass, or decals, except those that are authorized. Any authorized stickers must be clear of the area swept by the wiper. Check the windshield wipers and washer system, as well as the heater and defroster. Make sure you have spare electrical fuses, proper warning devices, and a properly secured, charged, and rated fire extinguisher. Look for excessive free play on the steering wheel by rotating it clockwise and counterclockwise. See the manufacturer's recommended standards for free play movement. Check that the left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way emergency flashers, and high beam headlight indicator lights work. Check that the horn is working properly. <laughs> Make sure that the seat belt is securely mounted, not damaged, and that it locks and adjusts properly. Ensure that the parking brake is set and that it will hold the vehicle by shifting into a lower gear and gently pulling against the brake. Then place the transmission back in neutral. Note that if you are on a surface where the unit might roll, you must use wheel chocks. Start by releasing all brakes with the engine running and build the air pressure to a governed cutout of 100 to 125 PSI. Shut off the engine. Make a full brake application and hold it for one minute. After the initial air pressure drop, watch the air gauge. The air pressure should not drop more than 3 pounds in one minute for a single vehicle or 4 pounds in one minute for a combination vehicle. Then turn the key to the on position without starting the engine and begin depleting the air pressure by making full brake applications, which adjust some brakes, and then releasing the foot brake. Check that the low air warning devices activate by 60 PSI or at one half governor cutout. 
continue full brake applications. Between approximately 20 to 40 PSI on a tractor-trailer combination vehicle, the trailer supply valve and parking brake valve should close or pop out. On other combination vehicle types and single vehicle types, the parking brake valve should also close or pop out. Turn on clearance lights, headlights, and taillights and exit the cab to continue the walk around. As you close the hood, check for any new fluid leaks and that all engine components are secure. Inspect the headlights, clearance lights, and identification lights on the front and top of the truck before moving to the side of the vehicle. On the left side, start with the doors and mirrors. Check that the doors are not damaged, that they open and close properly from the outside, and that the door locks work. The hinges should be secure with seals intact. See that mirrors and mirror brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. Ensure that the cover or door of the battery box is not damaged and is secure. Make sure that the fuel tank is secure, undamaged, and that there are no leaks from tanks or lines. Also, check the amount of fuel in the tank and then make sure that the caps are tight. Check the exhaust system for damage such as cracks, holes, or signs of leaks such as rust or carbon soot. The system should be connected and securely mounted, but some systems are designed to have movement. Inspect that the catwalk is securely mounted to the tractor frame. Moving along the frame, look for cracks, broken welds, or other damage to the frame and cross members. Look to see that the drive shaft is not bent or cracked, and that the safety loops are not bent or damaged and are mounted securely. Universal joints should be secured, free of foreign objects, and not worn. Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. If the vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, such as airbags, see that they are not shifted, damaged, or leaking, and that they are mounted securely. Check that the shock absorbers are secure and are not damaged or leaking. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drum is not damaged and has no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes or pads is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil and brake fluid. Beginning with the slack adjuster, look for broken, loose or missing parts. When pulled by hand with the brakes released, the push rod should not move more than one inch. The brake chamber should be securely mounted and not leaking, cracked, or dented. On the brake hose and lines, look for cracks, wear, or leaks and for secure couplings. Moving to the tires, check for no less than 2 30 seconds of tread depth. Look to see that the tread is evenly worn and that there are no cuts or separations or any other damage to the tire. The valve stem should be equipped with caps to prevent damage. Also, check for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge, which is preferable, or by striking tires with a mallet or other similar device. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Check that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not cracked or elongated. See that the hub and wheel seals are not leaking, and if the hub cap has a sight glass, that the oil level is adequate. If your vehicle has spacers, check that they are not bent, damaged, or rusted through. Spacers should be evenly centered with dual wheels and the tires evenly separated. Also, inspect for objects that may be lodged between the dual tires. Check for proper color and location of all external lights and reflectors. See that they are mounted securely, clean, undamaged, and working. If they are required, inspect the splash guards to see that they are not damaged and are mounted securely and the proper length. Check that the airlines are not cut, chafed, spliced, or worn. See that spring guards on the air tubing are not damaged, and make sure that the air and electrical lines are not tangled, pinched, or dragging against tractor parts. Inspect that the trailer air connections are sealed and in good condition on both the tractor and trailer. Make sure the glad hands are locked in place and free of damage or air leaks, and that the trailer electrical plug is firmly seated and locked in place on both the tractor and trailer. Some trailers are equipped with header boards and tarps, 
Make sure they are securely mounted and not damaged. On enclosed trailers, check the front area for signs of damage such as cracks, bulges, or holes. Ensure that the trailer registration and proof of an annual inspection are valid. Determine and verify the trailer height. At the fifth wheel, begin with the mounting bolts. Look for loose or missing mounting brackets, clamps, bolts, nuts, and stops. Both the fifth wheel and the slide mounting must be solidly attached to the frame. On other types of coupling systems, such as a ball hitch or pintle hook, inspect all coupling components and mounting brackets for missing, broken, or worn parts. Inspect for cracks or breaks in the platform structure that supports the fifth wheel skid plate. Look for proper lubrication. Check the fifth wheel release arm. Make sure that it is in the engaged position. Check that the kingpin is not bent or loose. Make sure that the visible part of the trailer apron is not bent, distorted, cracked, or broken. Ensure that the trailer apron is lying flat on the fifth wheel skid plate with no visible gap. Continue the inspection on the left side of the trailer with the landing gear. Check that it is fully raised, has no missing parts, that the crank handle is secure, and that the support frame and landing pads are not damaged. If power operated, look for air or hydraulic leaks. Continuing along the frame, look for cracks, broken welds, or other damage to the frame, cross members, box, and floor. Check the lights and conspicuity tape as you move along the unit and look for body damage. If the trailer is equipped with a sliding tandem, make sure the airline is securely mounted and held up, that the locking pins are locked in place or fully engaged, and that the release arm is secured. Check that the disc brake assembly and or brake drums are not damaged and have no missing parts. See that the brake lining, shoes, or pads is not worn and is free of contaminants such as grease, oil, and brake fluid. Beginning with the slack adjuster, look for broken, loose, or missing parts. When pulled by hand with the brakes released, the push rod should not move more than one inch. See that the brake chamber is not leaking, cracked, or dented and is mounted securely. Inspecting the brake hose and lines, look for cracks, wear, or leaks and for secure couplings. Check for cracked or broken spring hangers, missing or damaged bushings, and broken, loose, or missing fasteners. Look to see that leaf springs are not missing, shifted, or cracked, and that U-bolts and other mounting parts are not loose or damaged. If the vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, or other types of suspension components, such as airbags, see that they are not shifted, damaged, or leaking, and that they are mounted securely. See that the shock absorbers are secure and are not damaged or leaking. For the tires, check for no less than 230 seconds of tread depth. Check that the tread is evenly worn and look for cuts, separations, or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Valve stems should be equipped with caps to prevent damage. Check for proper tire inflation by using a tire gauge, which is preferable, or by striking tires with a mallet or other similar device. Look to see that the rims are not damaged and that there are no improper repairs. Check that all lug nuts and fasteners are present and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny exposed threads. Make sure that all bolt holes are not cracked or elongated. See that the hub and wheel seals are not leaking, and if the hub cap has a sight glass, that the oil level is adequate. If your vehicle has spacers, see that they are not bent, damaged, or rusted through. Spacers should be evenly centered with dual wheels and tires evenly separated. Also inspect for objects that may be lodged between the dual tires. Check that doors are not damaged. Also see that door ties, cargo straps, chains, binders, and cargo tie-down points are secure and not damaged. Then check for the trailer registration plate. Inspect for proper color and location of all external lights and reflectors. See that they are mounted securely, clean, undamaged, and working. If splash guards are required, inspect that they are not damaged, are mounted securely, and the proper length. Check the required rear impact guard to see that it is not cracked, loose, or missing. Continuing up the right side of the vehicle toward the front, check all of the same components as you did on the left. Once you have reached the front of the vehicle, turn off the running lights, clearance lights, and ID lights. Activate the brake lights, turn on the emergency flashers, and the high beam headlights. Then get out and check the front of the unit, back of the tractor, and the rear of the trailer. Turn off all of the lights and check the turn signals. 
Lastly, fill out the proper paperwork. Part 396.11 of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations requires that drivers complete a written post-trip inspection report at the end of each shift or day for all commercial motor vehicles they have operated. But before you perform an inspection, make sure you know your company's inspection policies. The purpose of vehicle inspections is not just to meet federal and state requirements. They are intended to ensure that your vehicle is in safe operating condition, protecting both you and other motorists. The reward of doing thorough and regular inspections is safer roadways for everyone. Let's share the road.